Superstation TBS presents the Atlanta Braves, America's team. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Peach wood age for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all that you do, this Bud's for you. By the official airline of the Atlanta Braves, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. And by Eckerd Drugs, America's family drugstore. Tonight from Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, it's the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies in a twi-night doubleheader. Hi, everybody, along with Billy Sample, Pete Van Wuren, welcoming you to Philadelphia, the first of two tonight between the Braves and the Phillies about to get underway. Braves on this road trip uh, finished strong in Cincinnati, winning the last two games after dropping the opener. And now, Billy, they take on a team they've had a lot of success with earlier in the year. Well, you're right, Pete. The Braves are 4-0 and against the Phillies so far this season after splitting 12 games last year. And the Braves have seven more games before the All-Star break total against Philadelphia. So this is the time where they can make a move, maybe get within single digits in the loss column from the first-place club, and not a better club to do it against than the Phillies. This is a completely new look Philadelphia Phillies team. Nine player changes have taken place on this team since the Braves saw the Phillies earlier in the year. And we'll be back with the lineups and all the action of game one right after this. Our national anthem performed by sensational creations. The Phillies also called up Todd Froworth, a hard throwing right handed reliever who had been up earlier with Philadelphia. For the Atlanta Braves, 31 and 45, 15 games back of first place San Francisco. Gerald Perry leads off at first base. Jeff Bowser bats second at third. Lonnie Smith bats third and left. Andres Thomas cleans up at short. Dale Murphy bats fifth and center. Geronimo Barroa in right field. Jeff Treadway, the second baseman. Bruce Benedict behind the plate. And Zane Smith will start game one. For the Phillies, 26 and 47, 14 and a half games back of first place Montreal. Bob Denier leads off in center field. Tom Herb bats second at second. Von Hayes in right field. Ricky Jordan cleans up at first base. Randy Reddy bats fifth in left field. Charlie Hayes bats sixth at third base. Dickie Thine the shortstop. Steve Lake behind the plate. And Terry Mulholland on the mound. Crew chief Bob Engel will be behind the plate calling the balls and strikes. Paul Renge at first. Tom Hallian at second. And Fred Brocklander will umpire at third base. We'll take a look at the Phillies defensively. Reddy, who plays most times at third base, can play a little outfield. He's in left. Bob Denier in center. Von Hayes in right. Charlie Hayes just called up today. He's at third. Dickie Thine at short. Tom Herr at second. Ricky Jordan at first. Mulholland and Lake, the battery. There's a look at Terry Mulholland. Six foot three, 200 pound left hander. We told you the Braves are 15 games back. The Giants lead the National League West. A two-game lead over Houston. Cincinnati, five and a half back. San Diego, eight and a half. And L.A., nine and a half games back. In the East, Montreal has a two-game lead over the Mets. Two and a half over Chicago. And four over St. Louis. As Gerald Perry steps to the plate to bring you to play-by-play -play in the first of two, Pete Van Warren. Okay, thank you, Billy. Perry, who got that RBI last night, breaking a string of 166 at-bats without one, comes in at 255. And this matchup, Mulholland against Perry, is one that both remember because on July 31st of last year, Mulholland pitching a game for San Francisco delivered a pitch to Gerald Perry. It was a line drive that caromed off his arm and broke his arm, and Mulholland was finished for the 88 season. Mulholland fastball, good hard slider. One of the few that left that Roger Craig school without throwing the split finger much. Ahead in the count, and that is a foul ball, making it nothing and two on Gerald Perry. Perry, Blouser, and Smith do up here in the top of the first. In the first of two, on a beautiful night here in Philadelphia, game time temperature is 80 degrees, very low humidity. One ball, two strikes now on Perry. I believe it was Mulholland that had that tapper back to him stuck in his glove and couldn't get it out of his glove and threw the whole glove to first base. Almost chased it. Brock Lander says no swing. The count even on Gerald Perry two and two. 
Braves trying to win their third straight after two one run victories over the Reds. Hit high in the air shallow left field Randy Reddy is there and there's the first out of the night. Perry retired on the fly to left and that'll bring up Jeff Blauser. Blauser comes in at 250 three home runs and 16 RBIs. And it's going to be difficult for the hitters to see normally this is batting practice time. Currently a 540 time. And the pitcher is in the sun and the batter is in the shade. Blauser takes the strike on one. There you can see how that shadow comes into play and it will throughout much of this first game. It'll continue to move out toward right and right center field. Nothing in two now on Jeff Blauser. Blauser hits safely in each of the three games in the Cincinnati series. And the 0-2 pitch taken inside for a ball one and two. What happens when you're batting in the shade and pitching out of the shadows for the hitter it's tough to pick up the spin on the ball. He got him with a let up. First strike out of the night for Mulholland two men gone here in the top half of the first inning. First time we've seen the change up and it worked for Mulholland he got strike three swinging on Blauser. And to echo that point tough to pick up change of speeds. That'll bring up Lonnie Smith, the former Philly. He's batting 321 with 10 overs and 28 RBIs. Hitless in his last eight at bats in the Red Series. He did have a sacrifice fly in there, driving in a run during that string. Nothing in one the count on Lonnie. Little ironic twist to the Marty Clary story of last night. Clary, as you know, called on as a replacement starter for Pete Smith, who had to miss his scheduled start because of a case with the flu. Clary was supposed to pitch in tonight's doubleheader. And while Marty was four hitting the Cincinnati Reds last night, Marty's mother and sister were driving to Philadelphia so they could be here tonight to watch him pitch. And they missed the whole game. High in the air to left center field, Dernier battling that sun out near the track for the catch, and that's it for Atlanta in the top half of the first. One, two, three, go the Braves in the first. At the end of a half inning, Atlanta nothing. Philadelphia coming up. No score as we go to the bottom half of the first inning. The Braves defensively in game one have an outfield of Lonnie Smith in left, Murphy in center, Baroa in right. Around the infield, Blauser at third, Thomas Short, Treadway second, Perry at first, doing the catching Bruce Benedict. And on the mound, left-hander Zane Smith making his 17th start of the year. Zane with a record of one win, 11 losses. ERA is 4.36. He has lost his last seven decisions in the games that he has lost. In those 11 losses, the Braves have scored only 23 runs. So he'd like to see some runs on the board on the Atlanta side in this one. Not only that, but not to give up any unearned runs. Zane has given up 15 unearned runs. Really hasn't had the support offensively or defensively. It seems like every game he pitches in, something weird happens that allows a run to score. We've had rundown plays the Braves have botched. We've had pick, uh, pitch outs that have been called at the correct time, and then the, the throw down to the base goes astray, and a run winds up scoring. It seems like something like that happens to Zane every time out. We'll see what his luck looks like tonight. It's Bob Dernier hitting just 172, a home run, nine RBIs. Steps in to lead off the bottom of the first. High in the air to right, and Baroa is there for the catch. One pitch, one out in the bottom half of the first inning. And Braves are going to see a lot of left-handed pitching, all left-handed starting pitching in this series for Philadelphia. Mark Langston scheduled to pitch Monday night for Montreal, so that's a string of five straight lefties. Braves will see Tom Browning last night, six straight lefties. I believe Ken Howell's the only right-hander in the Phillies starting rotation now that Antaveras has hurt. Here's Tommy Herr batting 284 with a homer and 18 RBIs. I start to say, Pete, that if we can notice from up here that Zane has had that kind of support, you can imagine how you start to feel on the field when another one of those freaky plays come about and you're starting to think, uh-oh, here we go again. Herr with a ball and no strikes. Former St. Louis Cardinal, former Minnesota Twin. And the count goes to two and nothing. Hers having a pretty solid year at 284. Should get some all-star consideration, but 
second base in the National League is probably the best as far as the competitiveness of the second baseman. You have Doran, you have Sandberg, you have Thompson, all having good years. You have Randolph having a good year. You have her having a good year. Jeff Treadway. <laughs> Absolutely. Cap goes to two and one on Tommy Herbert. You're right, that position offensively in particular. Almost everybody in that 270 to 300 range. Next pitch to her caught the corner in the count even two and two. Vaughn Hayes on deck. This is a good hitter's ballpark. It's 330 down the lines, only 371 to the power alleys, and the ball really carries well here at the vet. 408 to dead center field. Her stepping back in with a count of two and two. Right to the shortstop, Andres Thomas. On to Perry for out number two. So two down quickly here in the bottom half of the first inning. And now baseball's newest millionaire, Von Hayes, who recently signed a big money contract. And since he signed the contract, his batting average is going the wrong way. Newest two millionaire. Yeah. 278 on the air for Von Hayes. 13 home runs, 44 RBIs. He's fighting a slump right now, hitless in his last 17 at bats. And he has not hit a home run in his last 67 at bats. He was leading the league in batting for most of the first three weeks. One ball, no strikes to Vaughn Hayes. Probably headed for his best power performance of his career. 21 home runs, the best he ever turned in in one year. That back in 87. He had only six home runs last year. Has 13 this year so far. Now you can see how the batting average has tumbled since the start of the year on Vaughn Hayes. No score, bottom of the first, two outs, and a 2-0 pitch to Hayes is driven toward right, caught by Perry, and it's a 1-2-3 bottom half of the first for the Phillies. Three up, three down for both sides. After one in game one, no score from the bet. Tomorrow, the rejuvenated Philadelphia Phillies take on Lonnie Smith and Atlanta, beginning at 7 Eastern tomorrow on TBS, cable's most popular network. For scoreless, Braves batting in the top of the second. This doubleheader is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. Any use of the pictures, descriptions, or the accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. Andres Thomas leads off the second. He's hitting 241, nine homers, 37 runs driven in, facing Terry Mulholland, whose first pitch is upstairs for a ball. No score. As we go to the top of the second, it'll be two lefties in game two as well. Derek Lilliquist against former Brave Larry McWilliams. Thomas breaks his bat and the ground ball is short. Dickie Thon throws him out one away. One down in the second, now Dale Murphy. You get the feeling that this is going to be a pitcher's battle until those shadows cast all the way past the infield. Murphy had the game winning RBI last night hitting 253 with six homers and 37 RBIs. We are only three games away now from the midway point of the season. And if you look at Murphy's numbers and double them. He is heading for a career low for a full season 12 or 13 home runs. And about 74 75 RBIs. Driven to right field, but Von Hayes is right there for out number two. Mulholland's retired the first five he's faced. And the Braves really haven't had a lot of bad weather to play through. Sometimes early in the season when the weather's cold, some of the power hitters, it takes them a while to get loose. But the RBIs, if you're going to have a bad year, is not bad. 75, but the home run production, not what Dale has been accustomed to. Here's Baroa is going to get a lot of playing time over the next few days with all the left-handers the Braves are seeing. They're on the mode, 306, two home runs, eight RBIs. Has really come on strong after going just one for his first 16. Two and oh the count. Baroa, a very aggressive hitter, and he hits the ball to all fields. 
That one way outside makes it three and zero. Oh. The Braves are 11 and 12 against left-handed starters. So this should be their make or break streak. Well, I think if the Braves are looking to have a better second half and maybe make a little run at somebody in the second half of the season it's series like this when you come out of a series against a team like the Reds taking two out of three and then you come up against the teams like the Phillies that's the team that you've got to take three out of four from you can't go in there and split the series or even lose three out of four full count three and two now on Geronimo Barroa well it hurts that this is a double header because it's hard to sweep double headers now payoff pitch on the way to Baroa. The pattern of the Braves the last few years has been to play so-so ball for a little while and then really fade drastically in the second half. That was not the case last year. The Braves got off to a horrible start and never recovered from it. But in past years, there have been a lot of seasons when the Braves have been within eight to ten games of the top at the All-Star break and then really faded. They'd like to improve in the second half this year. But right now they've got their hands full with Terry Mulholland who's retired six in a row. We go to the bottom half of the second in game one with no score. The Dukes the master. You bet I am. <coughs> John Wade in the Sons of Katie Elder. 1035 Eastern on TBS Sunday morning. First baseman Ricky Jordan leads off here in the bottom half of the second. He'll be followed by Randy Reddy and then Charlie Hayes. Jordan called up midway through last season. Had a good second half of the year for the Phils last year. Hit 308 with 11 homers and 43 runs driven in. And for a big guy, he has good speed. Ball on the count on Ricky Jordan. Comes in with a seven-game hitting streak. Two and zero the count. That'll be out of play off to the right. The count goes to two and one. One thing you can say, Lee Thomas hasn't been afraid to make any moves. No, he is really changed players this year. The Phillies have had 38 different names on their 24-man roster, and it's only June 30th. That one bounced off Jordan's foot. The Braves tried to play it through. And evidently, with that big swing, he gets on top of the ball and beats it into his legs with that shin guard over his left leg. He's still walking this one off. The count is even two and two. Boy, when you got 18 innings of baseball ahead of you, that's the last thing you want to do your first time up. <laughs> Zane's got that good sinker as you look at Randy Reddy, the on deck batter. And you'll see that a lot, especially when he comes inside and he has a little sharp slider to go with it. You're trying to swing and, and scoot your legs away from the pitch at the same time. Now he's back in there, and the 2-2 pitch from Zane Smith hit high in the air, shallow center field. Murphy was playing deep as a long run, but he gets there and makes the catch for the out one away. And that'll bring up Randy Reddy, who's playing in left field tonight. Reddy, who came over from the San Diego Padres in the Chris James deal, has an overall batting average for the two teams combined of 274. Two home runs, 11 RBIs. Breaking ball misses inside ball one. Not a real big crowd here yet but they'll be filing in throughout this first game. Kind of a laid back crowd right now. Not making a whole lot of noise. Need to get Hans and Franz in here and pump them up. <laughs> one ball one strike. That missed low and away two and one. Randy Reddy's the kind of guy that I think that will benefit from AstroTurf difficult to defend he's off the plate he steps into the ball he hits the ball to all fields and before this trade he had played most of his home games on grass in fact all of them with Milwaukee and San Diego 
And he very quietly put together some pretty good seasons at San Diego. You look back at 1987, ready, hit 309, 12 home runs, 54 RBIs, and you didn't really hear that much about him throughout that year. Blauser can't come up with the ball. It took a little bit of a high hop at the last moment. And Randy Reddy becomes the first base runner of the night. Jeff goes to his left. And as Pete said, it really accelerated that last hop. Well, that ball has some top spin on it, Billy. When it hits off that turf, it's going to take a little bit of a high bounce. That might have just been a case of Jeff Blauser not having that much experience playing on the turf at third. He's charged with an error. There's Charlie Hayes. Hayes acquired from the Giants in the Steve Bedrosian deal, just called up from Scranton Wilkesbury. He's hitting 200 in his brief time with the Phillies, just one for five. But what's new, Billy? You've got a runner at first on an error with Zane Smith pitching. <laughs> oh, you have to laugh. Didn't get the fastball, the count 0 and 2, Charlie Hayes. Though I'm sure Zane's not laughing. Larry Boa going through the signs. Hayes, basically a pull hitter. While down in Triple A with the Phillies, Tony Taylor at first. Hayes was being tutored by Dale Unser, former Philly hitter and hitting instructor, and Jim Fergosi trying to get him to go to all fields. But with a guy like Zane who can really run that fastball away from you, a little tough to do up here. Hayes from Brooklyn, Mississippi. He's 24 years old. Played in the Giants organization for six years. The one two on the way just missed inside. You saw Benedict trying to bring that pitch back in, get the strike call, but Bob Engel wouldn't go for it. The count two and two. That was the pitch inside to freeze him. Dickie Thon on deck. But you get the feeling they're going to try to get Hayes out outside. One man out, two and two the count. There's your runner at first, Randy Reddy. And the 2 2 with the runner going is fouled back by Charlie Hayes. Count remains 2 and 2. The rebuilding of this Philadelphia ball club really all began when Mike Schmidt announced his retirement. When Schmidt retired, the Phillies, of course, were looking for a third baseman. And then one deal just seemed to follow another. And another, and another. Hit sharply down that left field line. That's a fair ball. It's going to carry him around in that corner. Ready on his way to third. He'll be held there and down at second with a stand-up double. Here's Charlie Hayes. Runners are at second and third with one man out. Not a bad idea. They tried to come over with a the curveball. They really didn't show Hayes a curveball. And a lot of time young hitters will have trouble with that pitch, but he threw it not in a bad location. Jammed him a little bit, but right over the third base back. So now Zane Smith in some trouble. Second and third, one man out. Dickie Thon, the batter. He's hitting 220, six homers, 26 RBIs. He's hit all six of those home runs in the last 29 games. Hit up the middle. Andres Thomas, nice play to his left. He throws over to third. That's the only play he thought he might have a chance of making. He had no chance of getting Dickie Thon at first. In to score is Randy Reddy, and it's 1 nothing Philadelphia. Another unearned run scored against Zane Smith. Don drives in his 27th run with an infield hit. A couple of great plays. This one, Andres, to keep the Phillies from scoring two. And he throws immediately to third, but third base coach Larry Boa told Jordan to stay. Or to told Hayes to stay right on the bag, not even to circle it, because without a play at first base, the only play would have been at third if Hayes had taken a wide turn. Now the catcher Steve Lake who comes in at 280 one home run seven RBIs. He didn't agree with that call by Bob Engel nothing in one it's one nothing Phillies bottom half of inning two. And runners are at first and third with only one out. Infield at double play depth. 
And Lake hits one the other way into right field. That'll bring home Charlie Hayes, make it 2-0 on his way to third. Dickey Thon, the throw there is high. Good save by Jeff Blauser. Because if that throw had sailed by Blauser, another run would have scored. Give Lake an RBI his eighth. And the Phillies are first and thirding the Braves here in the bottom half of the second. They've scored two. Outside fastball, good piece of hitting by Lake. Barra as a play as you watch Hayes score the second run of the inning. So runners remain at first and third. And Boa talking to Mulholland in this situation with one out. He may try to sacrifice Lake in the scoring position. Unusual. Boa just finished talking to him now, flashing signs for the base runner. Mulholland still looking as if he didn't get the first set of signs straight. Blauser is in at third. Perry has to hold the runner at first, then he'll charge as Mulholland tried to bunt it and missed it. The count on one. And activity has begun already in the Atlanta bullpen. Right hander Jim Acker has begun to loosen up down there. Mulholland one for 37 in his career as a hitter, so you get the feeling he doesn't really handle the bat well. Oh, and two, he's tried to bunt two pitches that were away from him. Didn't come close to either one. Larry Boa flashing more signs. Mulholland wants the signs given again. He may be the most well informed hitter in the big leagues when he steps in the batter's box. He's had a long meeting and had the signs given twice almost every time. He is squaring again, gets the bunt down. Zane Smith will hold the runner at third, then throw on to first. That's all Mulholla was expecting to do, is to get that runner from first, Steve Lake, down to second. So 1-4 on the sacrifice, putting runners at second and third with two outs for Bob Dernier. I'm not sure if I would have thrown him a strike in that situation. He tried to bunt two pitches out of the strike zone, so why not throw him another one? Dernier playing in place of Lenny Dykstra. Who's the proud father of a brand new baby boy and back in New York with his wife? Should be back here tomorrow, I would imagine. They're near fly to right in the first inning. Right off the fists. Nothing at one. It seems as though since men have become more involved with the childbirth process that baseball players are now going home to be with their families when their wives are ready to deliver. I don't think it used to be that way. Oh, you would have gotten shot for even asking. They're near taking a breaking ball low and inside. One ball, one strike. In fact, Juan Samuel, the player that was traded for Dykstra and McDowell, went home not too soon after the trade to be with his wife who was delivering. Now the 1-1 one, one coming. That's a strike in the outside corner. Dernier twice in his career has had five hits in one game, and both of those times it was against Atlanta. In July of 83 and in May of 84. And he really hits the Braves well in Atlanta. The runners are at second and third. Two runs are in. Two men are out. And a 1-2 pitch on the way. Little bouncing ball to the left side. Blauser will field his throw on to first is in time to get Dernier and retire the side. But the Phillies score one earned and one unearned run. And after two in game one, it's 2 nothing Philadelphia. 2 nothing Phillies as we go to the top half of the third inning in tonight's first game. Lower third of the order, Jeff Treadway, Bruce Benedict, and Zane Smith. Do up against Terry Mulholland. Treadway batting 288. He has three homers, 13 RBIs.
Trying to bunt his way on. The bunt's down the first base side. Mulholland will field. He goes through with the throw, but he had no chance to get Treadway. It's a bunt single, and the Braves have their first base runner. I was a little surprised on that bunt, Billy, that the catcher, Steve Lake, didn't go out after it. Looked like he might have had a shot if he had pounced out of the box immediately. You could tell by the way Mulholland was going after it. He was a little indecisive as to whether to let it roll foul or not. And Treadway really has these baselines down pat. He knows how the grain of the AstroTurf is going to roll. He has had about three or four base hits just like that. Now Benedict taking a strike. Bruce at 183, a homer, two RBIs. He's hit less than his last 10 at bats. In the dirt, good stop by Lake. If you can deaden a ball like Treadway, I think it's good to bunt on AstroTurf because no one really expects it. The ball rolls to the fielder so quickly that they're often playing about seven or eight steps behind the bag at the corners. If the catcher doesn't field as Lake did in there, you've got a base hit. Downstairs, and the count on Bruce goes to two and one. Phillies with two runs, three hits. Braves, no runs, one hit now. Nobody out in the top of the third. And it goes to three and one now on Benedict. And Mulholland has been plagued by what Pete Smith has been plagued through much of the season. That one big inning, he can be cruising, and all of a sudden you put together back to back hits, a walk, and a long hit. Boy, he almost got Treadway there. That was a pretty quick move. Tell you what, if Treadway hadn't gone for the back corner of the bag like he did, he would have been tagged out. Very seldom do you see that step off snap throw the first where the pitcher releases the ball above his shoulder. A lot of times you see it almost in a sidearm delivery. Full count now, three and two on Bruce Benedict. Pitcher Zane Smith on deck. Again, a snap toss over. This time, Treadway got back easily. Runner is going on the 3-2, and it's fouled off down the left side. Treadway will return. Treadway doesn't have a big lead, so if he's running on the pitch, Bruce had better make contact. He's not going this time. Benedict taps it toward third. Hayes will have one play on to first in time. Down to second goes Treadway. He'll be the runner there with one out for Zane Smith. Zane handles the bat well. He has a 185 batting average. would be a good time for his first RBI. Outfield shades him a little bit the opposite way. But it tried to get it past the mound did not the runner has to hold as Mulholland throws out Zane. Well I know what Zane was thinking there he was thinking to push that butt past the mound get a couple of runners on but I don't know how happy Russ Nixon's going to be with that decision he got a runner in scoring position why not take a whack at driving him in runs are tough enough to come by yeah Russ gets a little upset we saw a situation earlier in the season in which Deion James with the potential winning run at third base tried to drop a bunt well let's see if Gerald Perry can repeat his third inning performance of last night he Got that run scoring double with two outs in the top of the third of last night's game, which ended a streak of 166 at bats without an RBI. And he comes up here in the top of the third tonight with two outs and a runner in scoring position. He flied to left his first time up. In that situation last night, Tom Browning on the mound 
He threw him two fastballs inside. Gerald missed both of them and then tried to go with the fastball away and Gerald stayed in and slapped it down the left field line. Pitch to Perry has taken high ball one after the game last night a writer was in the Braves clubhouse and was asking Gerald Perry how does it feel to get that monkey off your back meaning that long RBI scheme Lonnie Smith who has a locker next to Gerald said how does it feel to get the teammate your teammates off your back Gerald. Now he's not going to come through this time as second baseman Tommy Hurd throws him out. Braves strand the runner at second. And we go to the bottom half of the third in game one Braves down by two. In the bottom of the third Tommy Hur, Von Hayes Ricky Jordan do up for the Phillies against Zane Smith who trails two nothing. Her grounded out to short his first time up. One and all the count on the Philadelphia second baseman. Her another one who must have fouled a few pitches off that front foot. He's got a guard not only over the shin a little bit but right down over the top of the shoe. Count even on Tommy one ball one strike and plus he has to deal with base runners coming in sliding at second base possibly spiking him on the foot and ankle. That is a little weird looking. Two and one the count now on Tommy Herb. You no know, if you're playing for a first place club it's fashion. Looks like a cricket player. <laughs> Here's the 2-1 delivery from Zane Smith through a changeup and missed a little bit high. 3 and 1. The Phillies are leading at 2 nothing. We're in the bottom half of the 3rd of game 1. And he walked him. First walk issued by Zane Smith. And now Von Hayes who lined out to first in the first. A lot of trade rumors of course have been circulating about Zane Smith. Almost any deal that has been written about or talked about in the last couple of weeks. He's been the player. But apparently the Braves are shopping around and there is some interest out there. But so far there have been no deal struck. Well, if you're going to trade a player like Al Rosen has, you try to trade him on an up note. Runner was going, and Hayes fouled off the pitch. He traded Dennis Cook after Cook won his first major league start, or first game. He traded Tracy Jones, though Jones was batting less than 200. He was hot at the time that he was traded to the Tigers. There is the scouting contingent that's here. Sam Mealy is here in the white hair in the front row. Tom Ferrick. Off to his left, Farrick is with Kansas City. One of my former managers in GM, Joe Klein, working for the Tigers. Long look toward first by Zane. And my guess would be that one of the reasons for Joe Klein being here tonight might be to look at Zane Smith because the Tigers are looking for starting pitching. And a lot of their starting pitchers, like Doel Alexander and Frank Tanana, have some age on them. Zane, 28 years old. One ball, one strike on Vaughn Hayes. <laughs> Nobody out. Tommy heard the runner at first. Chased back by Zane. Again, he goes over, and again, Tommy Herback. Her has four steals this year and six tries.
fouled off. It's one and two on the Philadelphia right fielder. Funny how things can go full circle on a player during the winter and during spring training. You saw Von Hayes name in a lot of trade rumors. But after the retirement of Mike Schmidt, Lee Thomas deciding that no, Hayes is going to be the nucleus of this team, the guy we're going to build around. And they signed him to that big money contract. Again, her chase back a little closer this time. Even though Hayes's power numbers have fallen off of late, he is still the guy with their big numbers. He has 13 homers. Next on the club, Dalton and Thon with six. He has 44 ribbies. Dalton has 25. So you can understand just how valuable he is as a power po uh, power component for the Phillies. I think the Phillies always felt when they got Von Hayes that he was going to be the type of player who would be hitting 20 to 30 home runs a year. He's only had one year where he's hit over 20 home runs. Always gets a lot of doubles. Fouled away, still one and two. Steals a few bases, can play more than one position. He's changed his batting style a little bit from a year ago. Last year he used just about the entire batter's box. Remember how widespread his feet were? It looked like he could not generate much power, but he's narrowed his stance a little bit. Feet much closer together this year than they were a year ago. Possibly to enhance his power. He didn't get that breaking ball. Zane Smith recording his first strikeout. That's out number one here in the bottom of the third. Curveball. Oh, my goodness. What a spot. Now Ricky Jordan who fly to center his first time. You can tell those former hitters. Oh my goodness. I don't want to see that again. And if you were a former pitcher you'd be saying oh what a great pitch. <laughs> One man out here in the bottom of the third it's two nothing Philadelphia. Hit high and deep to left center field Murphy is going to get there shy on the warning track. And back to first goes Tommy Hur. two men are down. Now Randy Reddy. Reddy reached on the error by Jeff Blauser. In the second inning came around to score a run. Speaking of Joe Klein and a scout for the Tigers looking at Zane Smith I think Zane would be very effective in the American League more grass stadiums especially at Tiger Stadium where they keep the grass very high like Wrigley or Candlestick Park. But with Zane's record it's going to be tough to get an awful lot or as much as you would have gotten let's say oh five six weeks ago even though he has pitched well at times. Pitch coming to ready taking high away for a ball and of course a couple of years ago the price for getting a Zane Smith would have been extremely high when he was a 15 game winner on a team that finished in last place. But the Braves have some pitchers who are throwing well in Richmond. Tommy Green, Kent Merker. Runner going. Benedict with a good throw down to second base. He got him. Andres Thomas took the throw. Tom Herr caught trying to steal and that winds up things here in the bottom half of the third. Nothing doing for the Phillies. And we go to the fourth inning of game one. It's two nothing Philadelphia. Two nothing Phillies. We go to the top half of the fourth inning. Jeff Blauser will lead it off against Terry Mulholland to tell you all about it. Here's Billy. Okay, thank you, Pete. Blauser, Lonnie Smith, and Thomas. Two, three, and four in Russ Nixon's order to face Mulholland. And the first pitch line in the right center field for a base hit. Hayes over quickly to cut it off. Blauser, big turn at first base, but he'll go back. He has hit well of late. Jeff now five for his last 12. And the Braves have the tying run at the plate in the name of Lonnie Smith. I think we're starting to see with Jeff Blauser something that we see in spring training every year when he plays a lot and gets comfortable and has an everyday position. He hits well when he's playing sporadically seems to have a little bit of trouble with the bat but get him in the lineup and keep him there for a while which has been the case in spring training the last couple of years and he seems to get the job done offensively. 
And to his credit, being such a young player, he hasn't complained about his sporadic playing time as Lonnie takes a fastball inside. Blauser, 24 years old, and he has numbers comparable to Gerald Perry. And Gerald has nearly 70 at bats more. The count evens at one. Lonnie fly to center his first time. The Phillies, one of three world championship teams that Lonnie Smith has been a part of. He was a member of the 1980 Philadelphia Club. Lonnie has three rings. Kansas City, St. Louis, and Philadelphia. So if you're looking for good physical makeups or good mental makeups, it's nice to have a guy like that on your team. He's been there. He knows the way. Even if if you don't have as much talent, you can get the most out of what you have. Two and two the count. Lonnie fighting a little bit of a slump of late. One for his last 12. Average has dropped to 320, but now he has enough plate appearances to qualify for the top 10. As Blauser is back safely. Jeff has attempted one steal, and that was successful. The 2-2 line foul down a left field line. Lonnie, one of three candidates from the Braves with a chance to make it to the All-Star game this year, the other two being pitchers, John Smoltz and Tom Glavin. But you can't discount Lonnie's numbers. You've got to consider him. He won't make it as a starter. But the National League All-Star manager, Tommy Lasorda, couldn't go wrong by selecting Lonnie as a utility outfielder. Lonnie fourth in the league in batting. But he missed that sharp slider. Strikeout number two for Mulholland. 2-2 two -two breaking ball. Might have been out of the strike zone. It was out of the strike zone. Lonnie chased one that was low. And cleanup batter Andres Thomas the batter. And I believe if Andres is batting average was a little higher he would get stronger consideration for the all star game because those other two numbers lead the National League shortstops the nine home runs and 37 runs batted in Ozzie Smith's getting all the votes as he does every year for his outstanding defense and Barry, Barry Larkin, Larkin with the league's leading batting average will no doubt be the second shortstop in the game. You get the feeling they will carry three, so who will be the third? Andres behind the count, two strikes. At a position where the offensive numbers often don't matter as much as the overall play. Tapped up the middle. Thine, nice play. What a forced play. What a play by her. Here's another one for the highlight films, folks. Ball took a couple of funny bounces. It kind of caromed off the side of the mound as it went by. That changed the spin on the ball a little bit. And a beautiful play by Thon. Barehanded grab at second by Tommy Herr. See how that ball changes directions a little, then changes again and hit the seam. Hit both the side of the mound and the seam. Changed directions twice on Dickey Thon. He was still able to make the play. And just like that, instead of having runners at the corners, one out, you have a base runner at first, two outs for Dale Murphy. Dale lined to right his first time. Takes a fastball inside half for strike one. Dell three for four last night with the game winning RBI. Looks like late call for a fastball and Dale got it but didn't get it and it's behind the count two strikes.
Two to nothing our score. Braves batting. Top of the fourth. And just like that, Mulholland is out of the fourth. Strikeout number three. No runs, one hit, one left after three and a half. The Phillies two. The Braves nothing. World-class divers strive for perfection in the Alamo International on U.S. Olympic Gold, a TBS Sports exclusive, 9.45 Eastern on TBS Saturday. Phillies trying to add to their 2 to nothing lead. They'll have ready Charlie Hayes and Dickie Thon to face Zane Smith batting in the bottom of the fourth. Ready reached on an error his first time and scored the game's first run, takes a strike. Ready in left field tonight, and that's where he flies the second pitch. Lonnie Smith under it for out number one. One out for Charlie Hayes, just called up from Scranton Wilkes Barrow. He doubled down the left field line. The Braves, A clubs, all won last night Durham, Burlington, and Sumter. Pat Tillman, Wes Kern, and Matt Turner combined for the victory on the mound. Bob Engel calls that a strike. Dave Butts went three for three. Brian Deke hit a homer. Durham four, Lynchburg three, the final in that game. Count evens at one. Burlington eight, Waterloo nothing. Steve Wendell went the distance, striking out 12. Tony Baldwin went two for three, and Mark Davis went two for four. Both hit homers. Hayes missed that fastball. Behind the count, one ball, two strikes. And Rick Trelesic, who had been released by another organization, went seven innings, striking out six, just missed inside with that fastball. That's in a six to nothing Sumter victory over Augusta. Glenn Garner went two for three with three ribbies. Nick Leva, the first year manager of the Phillies. And Hayes works the count full. Hayes at one time was ahead of Matt Williams at third base in the Giants depth chart. But the Giants didn't want to have two prospects playing the same position so Hayes played some outfield and now move back into the infield you can sometimes pick up a very good player that way if a guy is backed up at a position at the triple-a level if you go to that organization you can sometimes steal a guy like that for a very little price another payoff pitch ball four. So Hayes having a pretty good Phillies debut. He has been on base twice. And with one out, Nicky Thon the batter. The plan here in Philadelphia, very similar to what the Braves' plan has been the last couple of years. It's a long-term plan, sort of rebuild the nucleus of the major league team, wait for the farm system to develop some prospects. They're talking about three or four years before they get back to where they want to be. Tapped up the middle, base hit. Hayes will stop at second, and Thon has his second hit. His first hit drove in a run. What's going to be interesting about the Philadelphia situation is to see if the fans and the media here give Lee Thomas and Nick Leva that much time to turn things around here with the Phillies. This is a very impatient city. Yeah, you get the feeling that they're a little more impatient than the folks in Atlanta, which I'm not sure if that's good or bad. So the eighth place hitter, catcher Steve Lake, the batter. Lake had an RBI single his first time. Hayes at second, Don at first. Braves trailing by two. Zane Smith trying to pitch out of trouble. And this time comes inside with a fastball. Lake single to right his first time on a fastball away. Lake, as did his manager, Nick Leva, came over from the Cardinals. The 
the Braves are throwing a left-hander in game two. It'll be curious to see whether Lake will start both games. Highly unusual in that situation. Tapped foul. So Zane's ahead of the count two strikes. On July 31st here, Pete, they're having one of those home run hitting contest between Greg Lazinski and Dave Kingman. They'll probably use some juiced up baseballs and some cork bats and the folks in the upper deck will have a ball. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> there are base runners first and second Hayes and Thine. My goodness I didn't miss by much. I think there have been more upper deck home runs in this ballpark than any other park in the National League. They have little markers all over the upper deck both in left and right field where various home runs have been hit. The one two change line. Yes it's a catch and they'll have an easy double of Hayes off second base and the Braves get out of trouble. For the Phillies in the fourth no runs one hit and one left and the inning ending double play gets Zane Smith out of trouble as the Phillies hold to their two to nothing lead. Here is your sure standings in the National League West. Giants up by two over Houston. Cincinnati has fallen out of five and a half out. And San Diego, the Dodgers, and there are the Braves holding up the rear. Same place the Phillies are in the East. With Montreal now up by two over New York. The Cubs have really fallen on hard times. They've lost seven straight. They're now two and a half back. Cardinals hanging in there four games out. And Hieronymo Barra will lead the Braves off in the fifth. The first pitch from Mulholland taken for a ball. It'll be Barra, Treadway, and Benedict, six, seven, and eight in Russ Nixon's order. As the Braves will try to come from behind, trailing by two. Two and zero to count to Barra. You mentioned Mulholland's inability to be consistent throughout a game. That might work in the Braves' favor in a game like this. Low-scoring game, he, as you have mentioned before, seems to always run into that one bad inning. And he's behind the count. Three balls to Barra. And where that really manifests itself is the latter innings when you can't afford to make a bad pitch. Burrow one for three last night. And as Pete said, he should see a lot of action as the Braves will face a lot of left-handed hitters. Deep to center. Denier got a bad jump, but he made up for it, catching it a few steps from the wall in left center field, round number one. They're near a good defensive outfielder. He plays a fairly shallow center field against most hitters. But he still possesses pretty good speed. And even though he broke the wrong way on that ball, he was still able to run it down right out there in the edge of the track. And Jeff Treadway to better. Jeff reached on a bunt single his first time. Good. Fast ball or slider on the outside corner. Jeff came up empty for strike one. Currently hitting at 291, three homers, 13 runs batted in. This is the fourth doubleheader for the Braves. They are currently one, one, and one in doubleheader action. That is one area where the Braves lead the major leagues. They have played more doubleheaders than anybody, and they've got two more on the schedule one in St. Louis and one in San Diego. And I can hear our production people. Exhort very confident sighs of excitement over that. Lifted the left ready near the line. And they're two away. Feeling on double headers has really changed. Used to be years ago that you would schedule almost as many of them as you could because it always meant a bigger crowd. But that's no longer the case. Double header doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have more people. And they want to have teams now want to have as many dates as they possibly can to increase attendance. Yeah, if you're sitting in Dodger Stadium drawing three million you're going to lose some dates mm -hmm. because of the doubleheader some people because of the doubleheader Benedict grounded a third his first time as Lake calls for a fastball away the 0 1 pitch grounded the third Hayes feels long throw and they get Benedict crowd number three the Braves go up and down in order and they're half of the fifth 
And at the midway point of this game, game one, the Braves trail two to nothing. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Skip Kerry and Ernie Johnson with you now from Veterans Stadium is Terry Mulholland, who is making like Steve Carlton here tonight. He shut out the Braves at this point. We'll lead it off. He bats right-handed. He throws lefty. First time up, he had a sacrifice. Smith's first pitch is hit hard in the center field base hit. Mulholland with a single. Hit number five off Zane Smith. They have scored two runs, one unearned, but that's the story of his life this season anyway. Many unearned runs scored off Zane Smith. Dernier, who is 0 for 2 with a fly ball and a ground up. They're not holding the runner at first. They don't feel that Mulholland will run. Rather quiet here. It's like almost like you're auditioning for a job. Maybe we are. No balls, one strike. Every day, baby. <laughs> Fans are still coming in. They'll have 25,000 or so by the time the evening is over. He missed a fastball going away. They're in the neighborhood of 840,000 for the year. As you look at Veterans Stadium. A beautiful spot. It's a great hitters park. 408 to dead center and only 371 in the power alleys. That is short. And that is a ball. There's the power alleys. Most power alleys are in the neighborhood of 385 feet. They are in Atlanta. They have a dark background. Hitters like it here. It's not easy right now to see the ball. However, if you're a batter, twilight time, it's a good time to have a fastball. Two balls and two strikes. There's nobody out. Tommy Hur is on deck. As you look at Mulholland drifting off first, they're not holding him. Low. He's got a full count on a guy that he doesn't want to walk. There's Hur, who leads their club and hits, but he hasn't knocked in many runs. Only 18. One year, Hur knocked in over 100 runs. Hur did with the Cardinals. Runner going. Ball high. A walk to Dernier and Zane Smith is in trouble with two on and nobody out. Third walk. Now her who's grounded out and walked. Jim Acker starts to throw second time he's been up. Tommy her is a switch hitter. Played with Minnesota last year. He didn't care for the American League. From all reports. They traded him down here. He's not that far away from his home. Vaughn Hayes is on deck. The Braves are hoping for a ground ball double play. As Hayes gets the iron donut. Fastball over. Gerald Perry was uh, moving in, expecting a bunt. We'll see how they play it now. Boa giving signs. I haven't seen her bunt that much. On one. He hits it in a right field base hit. And a run will score. Throw toward third will be cut off. And Tommy Hur picks up his 19th RBI. 
You could tell he was aiming at right field. Let's see what he hit here. They wanted the ball in, didn't get it in, got it right over the heart of the plate. Mulholland scored. He runs pretty well. Zane Smith in big trouble. It's already three to nothing, and he has no one out here in the fifth. Vaughn Hayes is lined out and struck out. Perry made a good catch on him first time up. That's a strike. This guy's batting 328 with runners in scoring position. That's how you get those million dollar contracts or more. And the one strike pitch. Hit toward Perry off his glove. That's trouble. All hands save. They might give him a hit, but I would have given him an error. We'll see how they score. He had to backhand it, but it wasn't that difficult to play. Here it is again. The ball hit rather sharply. He just didn't get the glove closed. It went off the heel of the glove. It's an RBI and an error on Perry, second Atlanta error of the night, and Russ Nixon is on his way. So Zane Smith is through, Jim Acker trotting in, and the Phillies giving the Braves all kinds of fits here in the bottom of the fifth. Let's break for this commercial. The new catcher is John Russell. He will bat ninth, and Acker will bat in Benedict's spot. That would be eighth. Acker is 0-3, ERA 3.13, has no save, but he pitched quite well as a setup man for Russ Nixon. This is his 35th game. That's tops on the staff. ERA just a shade over three. And Jordan will face him with runners at first and second. So another error hurts Zane Smith if Perry comes up with that ball. He's probably got the guy nailed at the plate. There would have been an out somewhere. There's still nobody out. And there's a bouncer to third and foul past third. Jordan's been up twice and flied to center both times. He was their number one draft choice back in 83. Big strapping youngster. He can hit the ball a long ways. He's flied out twice to center field tonight. Mulholland has scored. Dernier has scored. Her is at second, and Hayes is at first. Give him an RBI on that error charge to Perry because they're saying the runner would have scored. Little fly ball short left. Thomas has got to catch it because Smith was back that deep. He came in, but it looked like he wouldn't be able to make the play, and Thomas saved everybody with a little one-handed catch for out number one. I don't know if Lonnie lost this ball or what. Look how far Thomas has to go, and he knows already that it's his play to make. Now Randy Reddy. Two runs are in. It's four zip. Reddy reached on an error in the second, an error by Blouser, then he flied to left in the fourth. They got him from San Diego. That is a strike. Ackers had pretty good luck this year with a breaking ball. In the past, he's had a fastball and a change, and he hadn't thrown many curve balls, but this year he's throwing more curves. There's one. He's ahead in the count. The Braves have handled the Phillies this year. They're 4-0. They've also handled the Reds. They're 4-2 with Cincinnati. But there's some other clubs they have not handled, obviously. He almost, and he might have hit Tommy Hur in the back. Time call. I think that ball hit him. Yeah, it did. 
to the two. Thomas reached for it and missed it, and it hit her. Freddie's batted 367 since joining the Phils. Breaking ball, and he laid off. In the second game, Derek Lilliquist will pitch for Atlanta, and Larry McWilliams, who's had a lot of luck against the Braves since leaving the Braves, he's six and zero, oh, will go for Philadelphia. Out of the way on a slider, it appeared. One out, runners first and second. Want to remind everyone that we've got that big fireworks display on July 4th. Montreal will be in town. Fireworks display after the game, sponsored by Kraft. The Braves, over the years, have always had July 4th as a home date. They've always had a great fireworks display and a big crowd. And the pitch. Did he go? Yes, he did. A foul tip, and Russell hung on. A good play by John Russell for the strikeout. Two away. Here's a look at it again. It may have been a strike anyway. Let's see. Oh, it was a little off the plate. But he just did tick it with the bat. Now a young man just called up Charlie Hayes. He has doubled and walked. They just called him up from Scranton, Wilkesbury. Two on. Hacker has gotten the first two outs. And he should have the third out. Murphy going to be short of the track. And he makes a catch. And a good job of pitching by Jim Acker. We have played five. However, Philadelphia leads it 4 nothing. He's probably the best mascot in the National League. John Russell will lead it off. <laughs> Reported in the papers today that he makes in the neighborhood of, well, Almost in the six figures in salary, but he works year round for the Philadelphia Phillies. He makes appearances for them. Wonder what he puts on his tax form. For employer. Um, what do you do for a living? Entertainer. And he is. And people, other mascots have copied him. Here's John Russell. Zane Smith pitched four innings, six hits, four runs, three earned. Russell takes the strike. Oh, Mulholland had an ERA of over seven, and he is shutting out the Braves on two hits. One of those a bunt. Russell, a former Philly, batting 128. No homers, no RBI. Oh, and two. Oh, and three. Strike out. That's number four, and he hasn't walked a batter. He just overpowered him here. In fairness to Russell, it's really tough when you play once every. 10 days or so. Here's Perry. We're in the six. Another game to follow, so stay with us. I think Russ Nixon's done a good job with this team. I know we're in last place by a bunch. Bouncer to short. Thon. Got him. Jordan swiped at him, although he didn't need to. I think Russ has done a good job. It has not been easy. Here's a look at the replay. The throw almost pulled him off the bag, but Jordan just did stay on. Murphy has been a disappointment. Perry has been a disappointment. Davis has been a disappointment. Gantz has been a disappointment. You can't blame the manager for those things. I'm a firm believer the manager can do just so much, and the players make the manager. If you've got the talent, most of these managers will win with it. 
Zane and Pete Smith have been major disappointments to this point in the season. And we're getting close to the halfway mark. And the record is still better than last year with all those disappointments. It was it's just uh, just something the manager has very little control over if any. I go back to that story about Chuck Dressen a long time ago. He won the pennant with the Dodgers. He wanted a multi year contract and the, and the big guy said the press said we only give one year contracts. He said I'll leave. They said see you later. He goes over to Washington. They finished last year before him with Chuck Dressen. They finished last again. Didn't have any players. Here's Blouser getting a walk. There have been exceptions where you picked up a few more wins but by and large most people in baseball feel that you got to have the players and then a manager can add a game here or there but not too many. Here's Lonnie Smith. Braves need a long ball. And there's a drive to left but it's foul. Lonnie Smith who has 10 homers and one of the few people in this business I don't know how many have ever been in it have been on three world championship teams three different ones. He was with these Phillies also the Cardinals in Kansas City when they won the World Series. He's 0 for 2. Two outs luck out that hit him boy that did it. Well Lonnie Smith got hit right in the knee it appeared. See if he's all right. He's walking it off. That ball looked like it hit him right in the left knee. Let's look. It was a breaking ball that just chased him. Looked like a slider. He tried to get out of the way and it hit him in the left knee. He's at first base. Another angle. Well, you could see that he tried to get out of the way. You have to make an effort, of course. If you just stand there and let a ball hit you, the umpire will not give you first. You've got to make an effort to get out of the way. There's some knuckleballs. You really are reluctant to get out of the way. They're not going to hurt you very much. But most of these pitches, you're trying anyway just to be not hurt. Here's Thomas. And it's fouled away. The Braves are in a position now. If they could get a base hit, they could get on the board. Thomas is grounded out and reached on a fielder's choice. Blouser at second and Smith at first. Fly ball right. Von Hayes is going to catch it right now. So the Braves strand a couple. And Mulholland still has them on his hip. We go to the bottom of the six. We're going to the bottom of the six. Want to remind everyone about the tryout camps being held by the Braves. They start at nine o'clock Friday, July 7th. The Braves will have a tryout camp at Sunnyside Park in Decatur, Illinois. Wednesday, July 12th, Legion Memorial Field, Mandan, North Dakota. Saturday, July 15th, Block Stadium, Gary, Indiana. And on the 17th, Monday, Washington High School in South Bend, Indiana. White and Irish country. Here's Thon. Here's the pitch. There's a strike on that breaking ball. Thon's had a good game. He's not only played well in the field, but he's two for two with an RBI. On one. And the fans don't like that. It was a breaking ball. You recall Thon was hit by a pitch few years back and he has been a long road back for him but it looks like he's back. He hit that one high and found a left. Count goes one and two. He had vision problems for years but he seems to have overcome that. Dicky Thaw. That happened when he was with the Houston Astros. And after he had had a great year, hit 298, I think, and it looked like he and Doran were going to be an infield together for 10, 12 years. 
Russell with the sign and Acker with the pitch. He struck him out. A breaking ball. Thon is out of there. Second strikeout by Jim Acker. And this is where he has had problems primarily against right hand pitching. That wasn't long enough for that one. Steve Lake catching tonight. And the pitch is low. Too bad Kevin Bass isn't in the game. Get Bass and Lake going. Steve Trout. Bass going on the disabled has really hurt your act, hasn't it? It's killed me. Yeah. <laughs> and Trout going to the other league. Fly ball right. Varroa. Two down. Gets a nice hand. He has pitched a shutout here tonight, allowing only two hits. Last time up, he had a base hit and scored a run. Bouncer out to Thomas in a very quick inning. As Thomas throws him out. I like to see that, the pitcher running him out instead of just jogging down that way. We go to the seventh, and the Phillies still lead it by four. Tomorrow, the rejuvenated Philadelphia Phillies take on Lonnie Smith and Atlanta, beginning at 7 Eastern tomorrow on TBS, cable's most popular network. More Braves baseball tomorrow and following on U.S. Olympic gold tomorrow evening. The International Diving Invitational from Orlando, Florida, hosted by Craig Sager. And then the World Cross Country Championships from Stavanger, Norway. And that will be hosted by Craig Massback. All that on U.S. Olympic gold following Braves baseball tomorrow night on CBS. Murphy leads it off. Let's see if he has a good weekend here. All these left-handed pitchers should give Murphy some good swings. Tonight he is 0 for 2. He lined hard to right first time, then he struck out the second. Had three hits yesterday, knocked in a big run. Knocked in the winning run. There's a bouncer to short, and he's going to be 0 for 3. Don throws him out. Now Baroa. 0 for 2 with the ground out and the fly ball to center. Pete Smith will pitch tomorrow. He failed to go to the post yesterday. He had the flu bug. Marty Clary, if you follow Braves baseball, came on and really did a great job against Cincinnati. Leads the league in hitting. He limited him to one run. I guess you don't invite Dave Parker and Pete Rose to the same. I match or Christmas party. Do you? Now Parker more or less implied uh, and he did imply that Rose is getting special consideration on this case. But you got to also realize that when Parker and Rose have never seen eye to eye they have never been friends to speak of. Parker in today's USA Today was upset that Bart Giamatti did not handle that case. Thon is moving around out there, isn't he? Throws out Baroa, gliding to his left. No apparent problem. Icorn starts throwing in Atlanta's bullpen. Treadway is next. He beat out a bunt the first time, then he flied to left. There's Four the, nothing, Philadelphia. There was the entertainment of the night if you're a Braves fan, the Philly fanatic. Outside of that, it hasn't been a pretty sight. On the outside corner. And I don't guess, come to think of it, it would be accurate to call the Philly Fanatic a pretty sight either. No. <laughs> Bouncer to third, Hayes to first, and the Braves go quietly again. One, two, three, you're out. We go to the bottom half of the seventh. Four to nothing, Philadelphia. Must be a birthday present.
Can't beat fun at the old orchard. Here we go to the bottom of the seventh with Dernier leading it off. I didn't realize, but I guess they've had a lot of problems whenever the Mets and the Phillies play. The, the fans are fanatics in both cities, and when the Mets come down here, they bring a load of fans with them, and they've had a lot of problems, a lot of fights. Curve is low. The count, one ball, one strike. Everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. There's a bouncer foul up by third. And do as I say, not as I do. That's very good, Scott. I'm going to write that down. One ball, two strikes. Want to talk about the uh, construction work in the hotel? And why do they do that? <laughs> the little guys with hammers follow us around. Wherever we go, they start at 8 in the morning. There's a bouncer foul. We were talking about this on radio, too. When would you like him to do it? It wouldn't bother you around midnight, 2 o'clock? I think if between the hours of 11 and 3, if they'd get all that work done, then you'd get, get in and get some rest. Yeah. <laughs> And they don't have to do much. All they got to do is, with a hammer, go tap. Yeah, just a little bit. And then they stop, and you wait for the next one. And there's a liner to left center that Murphy's going to handle. Round number one. Dernier now 0 for 3. He walked last time and scored. Here's Tommy Herr, who will turn around and bat lefty. He's grounded out, walked, and singled in a run. The Phillies lead it. Four zip. They're having a big reunion of the 64 Phillies here on August 19th. That was a team managed by Gene Mock that had it all wrapped up, they thought, and then lost the pennant in the last week. Being in St. Louis, and I remember that. Boy, that was a Great come from behind effort by the Cardinal. Curveball is high. 25 years ago. Bobby Wine was on that team. So was Cookie Rojas. There's a bouncer at Perry. Whoops! Nice recovery by Perry. It looked like it hit a seam or did something out there to bounce poorly, but he hung with it for the out. Yeah, this could have been a little embarrassing. You expect that big hop, and that's what you get. Von Hayes lined out, struck out, and reached on an error. Curveball all the way to the screen. You can meet uh, Jeff Treadway in person at the Braves Clubhouse store at CNN Center on Saturday, July 8th, from 2 o'clock until 3. Second baseman Jeff Treadway. He'll be signing complimentary autographs during this time. That is a strike. The Braves will be home against Montreal and Philadelphia. They'll be home until the All-Star break. A little bit outside. Acker working in his third inning has retired eight in a row. You can see where Treadway was playing. He plays very deep on these pull hitters who have power. He was about 10 feet behind the line, figuring that he could come in on a grounder, and it really helped because he was able to make that catch. Look how far back he is. He's almost an outfielder when he took away the base hit from Von Hayes. We go to the eighth inning. It's four to nothing. Philadelphia.
As we say in England, here is the Delta National League schedule. New York at Cincinnati. Boy, the Mets press be there to talk to Pete Rose. Pete's going to have to be hiding. Houston at Montreal, San Diego at St. Louis. The Pirates are at Los Angeles. The Cubs at San Francisco. The Cubs trying to snap that long losing streak. In the American, the Yankees go home to face Milwaukee. Toronto hosts Boston, Oakland at Cleveland. Tigers at Baltimore. They're still in first. Baltimore, California at Minnesota, Kansas City at Chicago. And here we go with Skip Carey. Okay, Ernie and Deion James pinch hits for Jim Acker and takes a fastball low and away. Acker went three innings, two hits, two strikeouts, and no runs. Mulholland deals and a fly ball to left field. Pretty well hit, but Reddy is back there. He's on the track, and he's got it. One down. Mulholland just keeps rolling along here. He's five outs away from a victory. Here's John Russell, who was a strikeout victim his first time. With his delivery the, in the dugout, I'm sure they're saying he's a dart thrower. In other words, he just kind of comes right over the top. It's almost like he's throwing darts, but I'm guaranteeing you it's going a lot faster than a dart. He's got good stuff. He has two major league complete games and one shutout. One out, nobody aboard. On the corner. And Russell is quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. He's showing you what you can do if you get ahead of the hitters. He has not been behind many tonight. He's only walked one. That was Blouser in the six. And he gets Russell on three more pitches. That is strikeout number five. Now watch this curve go down and in. He has made some good pitches. And Russell goes right over the top of it. Strike out. Gerald Perry has flied to left, bounced to second, bounced to short. Low and away. One ball, no strikes. Four nothing fields. Another game to follow. Braves had one. The only four games played this year between the two teams, but that is in jeopardy tonight. Ground ball short. Fine with a long throw, and the inning is quickly over. Mulholland is really doing it. Seven in a row again that he has set down. Still 4 0 Philadelphia. Deion James stays in the game to play first base. Mark Eichhorn is on to pitch. He'll bat in the leadoff spot in the order. And Ricky Jordan leads off the bottom half of the eighth inning in the ninth. The Braves will send Blouser, Lonnie Smith, and Thomas to the plate. Skip, we're talking about how much a manager means to a team. Another example was closer to home was Fred Haney, the late Fred Haney, who managed the Pirates. And as Joe Graziola used to say, they didn't have any players, and uh, uh, they'd lose opening day, and from there it was all downhill, and uh, eliminated after opening day. And they just could not win many because they didn't have many players. Icor and a strength to Jordan. And Fred Haney was the manager that came over and replaced Charlie Grimm and went on to to win a couple of pennants with the Braves in a World Series and because he had the players to do it. Curve ball sweeps outside. It's one and one between games of our doubleheader. We're going to have some wrestling for you. Ernie, I know these are two of your favorite gladiators. Ricky Steamboat against Terry Funk. I like Steamboat. Do you? Oh, yeah. I'll take Funk. Okay. For the regular. A ball and two strikes. Nick Leva looking on. He's got a nice contract. Yeah, with a race and an extension. Mm -hmm. Curve sweeps low. Two and two, the count. The job by the Orioles has made everyone realize that maybe you can go from last to first. If it ever happens that they win it, it'll be the first time in history it's ever happened. Little pop, short left field. Thomas out, calling for it. One away. Jordan is retired. Zane Smith is three outs away from being one and 12. And eight straight losses. Four. Again, he wasn't sensational tonight, but he didn't pitch really badly. Three earned runs and four plus innings. He 
see the stats on Randy Reddy for the year. I mean, fourth and night, curve outside, one ball, no strength. I've seen Smith pitch uh, much better than he did tonight. In all fairness, he did give up six hits, and he didn't seem to to really make the pitches when he needed to. I think ah! he's shell shock. I think he's in that mode now where yeah. even though you don't want to do it, you go out there expecting to lose, and when you expect bad things to happen, they generally do. One hopper to short, Thomas Fields. Ready is retired. Two down. Charlie Hayes, the batter, he doubled, scored a run in the second, walked in the fourth, fly the center in the fifth. But to show you how scouts are, I won't name the scout, but we were talking to a scout in Cincinnati, and they said our organization would take Zane Smith in a yeah. second. And he even had the idea of how he would use him. The wind and the pitch curve outside. Well, I'm not trying to do Russ's job or Bobby's job, but there might come a time when you just say to yourself, his stars are crossed here. It's just not going to work mm -hmm. out. Well, his name has popped up from time to time, especially last winter in trade deals. A ball and a strike to count on Hayes. Makes his home in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Breaking ball misses outside. Two out, nobody aboard. Phillies have a four-nothing lead. Down the right field line, trouble if it's fair, but it's hooking foul into the seats. Geronimo Barroa flips the ball back up there and makes some friends in the city of brotherly love. Good breaking ball. Hayes knew it. Eichhorn's dropped down side Arden. Him and the inning is over. No hits, no runs, no errors, none left. Last chance for the Braves. We go to the ninth. It's 4-0 Philly. There is the unhappy story. We enter the ninth inning. Blouser has one of the two hits. A looping single to right center in the fourth inning. The other a bunt in the third by Treadway. Strike at the knees on the outside edge. It's 0-1. Terry Mulholland seeking his first win of the year. His first win as a Philly. He has two complete games. There's the first out, I think. Maybe not. Yep. Hayes comes on. Von Hayes makes the catch. One away. This will be the ninth time the Braves have been shut out this year. They have returned the compliment four times. It will be the Phillies' sixth shutout. They have been shut out seven times, unless Atlanta can do something here in the ninth. Mulholland has one shutout in his career. That was the Giants in 88. His record was 3-10 and ten in the majors coming in. And activity begins in the Phillies' bullpen. Jeff Parrott is the right-hander. There's a liner into left center field. Reddy comes on. Can't get there. The ball gets by him. Lonnie Smith is limping a bit and stays at first base. There's the third Atlanta hit. He's normally an infielder, Randy Reddy, and he struggled a little bit on that ball. So a runner at first with one out. He tried to slide along, but he wasn't close enough to the ball. You can watch where the ball hits. And then he tried to glove it on his side, but coming over quickly is Dernier backing him up, and uh, so Smith had no chance to go to second base, but the Braves need four runs, so Smith playing it safe. Andres takes a strike over the inside corner. It's 0-1. Thomas 0 for 3. Renner at first, one out. Dale Murphy on deck. Braves need four runs to tie it. Well hit left field. That ball's got a chance. That ball is gone, and it's 4-2. to two. Number 10 for Thomas. He has 39 RBI.
There was no doubt when he hits him, boy, they explode off his back. Andres holds the bat high and he swings down at the ball and he gets some line drive type homers and he just picked one up here. We'll see if they stay with Mulholland. See how high the bat is and watch him swing down and get that ball and hit it over the left field wall. It was over with plenty to spare and here's Murphy. And they do stay with Mulholland. Of course they don't have Steve Bedrosier in that in that bullpen anymore. No, maybe they don't. Here comes Nick Leva after a long wait. And he may be double switching here. And he is. And the crowd boos, but Leva could care less. He wants to win himself a ball game. Jeff Parrott is the big right-hander in the bullpen, and he will doubtless be coming in. Don Carmen is the left-hander. It, it looked like he indicated he wanted Randy Reddy out of the game, but we'll wait and see about that, and we'll come back right after this. Well, there's a forward in our future, and it's Kurt, and he's in the game and playing left field, and he'll bat ninth, and Jeff Parrott is the new pitcher, and he will bat in the number five spot in the order. Parrott is four and two with one save, a 3.40 earned run average. This is his 32nd appearance of the year. He has taken over the short man role for our old pal Steve Pedrosian. The league is hitting 248 against Parrott, and he'll face Murphy, and then Tommy Gregg has grabbed the bat and he'll pinch it next for Barua. Need one more base runner to bring a potential tying run to the plate. There's one out in the ninth. It's 4-2. Mulholland pitched brilliantly. He went eight and a third. Four hits. Five strikeouts. One walk. Two runs. One hit batsman. One home run ball. Mulholland threw 93 pitches. Breaking ball on the corner to Murphy. It's 0 1. Four two Phillies, ninth inning. Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey. Would you pair it? Deal. Started to go, held up, fastball high and away. There's Greg waiting to pinch it next. Foul tipped, and that really rocked Steve Lake. A ball and two strikes. Murph takes a look at his third base coach Roy Matika, but there's not much Roy can tell him now. The one two. Got him. He missed a curveball by a foot and a half. Murphy is out on strikes for the second time tonight. Big sweeping old fashioned curve. Here it is. And down and away. Tommy Greg Bantz with two out, nobody on. Murphy now with 77 strikeouts and 297 advance. That's a bunch. Greg at 317, a homer, 13 RBIs. Jeff Treadway on deck. Right through there. It's even now, one and one. Lilliquist against McWilliams in the second game. Should do it. Ford is in our future. And the game is history. Greg flies to left. The Phillies win the game. The Braves get two runs on two hits. No errors. Nobody left. 4 2 final totals. Highlights after this. Phillies win the first game, 4-6-0. and oh. The Braves, two runs, four hits, two errors. Mulhall in the winner, Smith the loser. Parrott gets a save, one home run, Andres Thomas. Ricky Steamboat against Terry Funk in wrestling between games. Then we'll be back in Philadelphia. See you in just a little while.
Atlanta Braves baseball has been brought to you by Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. And by the official airline of the Atlanta Braves, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. Delta Airlines. Atlanta Braves baseball is a production of TBS Sports.